My name is Ryan. I am an ordinary employee who is about to turn twenty-nine this year. I have a girlfriend named Sophie, and she's great. She's so pure-hearted and honest that it feels as if I don't deserve her. I am so relaxed when I'm with Sophie. When I spend time with her, I can feel at ease. It's going to be close to a year since we started going out. It may be a bit early, but I am thinking of getting married to her. I don't think I will ever meet a woman in the future that I would want to share my life with. I also want to be the one to support her as early as possible. There is one flaw that she has, though. Well, I don't know if you can call this a weakness if you ask me, but she's always wearing worn-out clothes. Safi is not into fashion, or more like doesn't care much about her physical appearance. You can say that she's wearing shabby clothes. I once heard that her parents had passed away when she was a student. I never really talked about the details since then, because I thought it would hurt her. But judging from her appearance, I am worried that she may be living a poor life. That's another reason why I'm rushing to get married to her. I want her to have a normal life. One day, I sent a message to Sophie. Sophie, there's no change in our meeting place tomorrow, right? Of course not, Brian. Actually, I've reserved a restaurant where we can see the night view. I heard it's beautiful. How nice! Night view, huh? I can't wait. Yeah, I may have overdid it a little, because it may become our anniversary tomorrow. Anniversary? An anniversary of our first time seeing the night view together? Yeah, you can say that. Then it must be beautiful. Oh, I really can't wait. Yeah, neither can I. There's a part of Sophie that's a little dense, and I love that part of her too. The following day, Sophie had already been waiting at our meeting place when I arrived. I was hoping that she would dress prettier than usual, since I had told her that we'd be going to a restaurant where we can enjoy the night view, but. She was dressed as usual. I was a little disappointed, but I guess you can't help it. Maybe she wasn't able to afford any clothes to wear for this kind of occasion. If so, I intend on buying her clothes from now on. That's what I thought to myself. Sorry to keep you waiting. Were you waiting long? No, not too much. We still have some time left until our reservation. Do you want to go shopping? Yeah, sure. Is there something you wanted? No, it's not like that. I wanted anything in particular. I was hoping to get you some clothes. Clothes for me? My birthday isn't coming up yet. You're right. But there's no need to have a special occasion to give you something, is there? Clothes, her? It's not like I want anything in particular. Don't you want to look good? Um, I don't think I'm that interested. I haven't bought clothes much either. Then what about the clothes you're wearing now? Oh, this is something that my mother had bought me a long time ago. Your mom? I thought your parents had passed away when you were a student. That's right, when I was sixteen. But my figure hasn't changed at all, and I can wear my clothes from back then. Is that so? You're very good with taking care of your things, huh? Besides, I have a lot of clothes. So I don't need to buy any more. Thanks. Oh, then do you want to go inside the restaurant? Although it's a bit early. Yeah, I want to hurry and see the night view. All right, let's go. Wow, it's so beautiful. It sure is. I'm so glad you like it. Sophie was getting hyper, looking at the view from our table. She was staring endlessly outside. Glued to the window, as if she were a little kid, she had continued staring outside for so long that it looked as if the other customers around were giving us puzzled looks. But it didn't bother Sophie at all, and she continued to stare outside. As for me, I was planning to propose to her. That was all that I could think about, to be honest. I was so nervous. She was enjoying the view, and I thought now would be a great chance to make the move. So I did. 
Sophie, can I talk to you? What is it? I have something that I want to talk to you about. Why the serious face? I want you to marry me. <gasps> Are you sure I'm the one you want? Of course, you're the one I want. It has to be you. I'm so happy. Thank you. Then you'll. Yeah. Let's get married. Let's have a happy life together. I was so happy that I stood up and expressed myself with a fist pump. Everyone in the restaurant applauded and congratulated us. And I made a commitment to myself that I would make Sophie happy because she had gone through so much in life. Even after getting home, I couldn't help myself from getting excited. But just then, I had received a message that changed everything. It was from my ex-girlfriend Judy. We had broken up three years ago. Ryan, it's been a long time. What is it, Judy? What do you want? I saw you today. You were with a woman who looked dull and really poor. Did you taste the women change? Don't be so rude. I wonder if she's not embarrassed wearing such worn-out clothes. Aren't you not embarrassed being with her? She's not interested in clothes that match. She's down to earth. She's way below down to earth. She looked so poor. I couldn't stand looking at her. It may be true that her clothes are worn out, but she's beautiful inside. She's so pure-hearted and honest that it feels as if I don't deserve her. Unlike you, she doesn't waste money. That's all. How rude! I don't waste money. You are not serious about her by any chance, are you? Of course I am. I proposed to her today, and we're getting married. Marriage? You've got to be joking! Are you doing this to get back at me because I dumped you? Not at all. She's way better than you. How can you say that? Well, maybe you two make a good couple, since you are dull and boring men. Sorry about that. I contacted you because I was worried, but I don't care now. Yeah, just leave me alone. Judy loved to go shopping and always begged me to buy her things. I always tried my best to answer to her, and that made her begging increase even more. It was so bad that I had asked her to limit my presents to birthdays and anniversaries, but she ended up dumping me. I was exhausted from all that, and one day I decided to go to an art gallery. There was a woman who was constantly staring at one painting. Although she was wearing worn-out clothes, I fell in love with her because she looked so beautiful, looking so serious. And that woman is Sophie. There was something mysteriously attractive about the painting she was staring at. No wonder why she couldn't take her eyes off of it. When I was also looking at the painting, Sophie started talking to me. Are you interested in this painting? Yeah, there's something about it that I'm so mysteriously attracted to. I get so drawn into it unconsciously. Sophie became so happy after I had said that. We ended up talking about the painting for a while and then exchanged our contact information. We saw each other a lot after that and then started a relationship. A few days had passed after my proposal, and I received a message from Sophie saying this: "I want to continue living in my house even after we get married. So, can you come over next time?" Actually, I had never been to Sophie's place before. She never invited me. I felt bad because I didn't think she was having a decent life, and I thought she would be embarrassed if I saw. However, it was all my misunderstanding. When I went to her place over the weekend, there she was, living in the big luxurious house. I'm living alone in this house, so I would love it if you move in. You live here all by yourself? Yeah. My parents had left this house for me. My father comes from a wealthy family, and my grandparents had also passed away when I was little. I don't have any brothers or sisters, so 
I don't have a family anymore. You're going to become my family now, and I won't be lonely anymore. Come on, let me show you around the house. Okay. I always do my painting in this room. I loved to draw ever since I was a little girl, and my parents had built this art studio for me when I was little. It's the first I've heard this story. I'm sorry, I've never worked at a company before, and I was embarrassed to tell you that I've been painting all my life. Do you remember the painting we were looking at together when we first met? Yeah, of course I do. It was such a nice painting. I painted that picture. What? That painting? Yeah. Oh yeah, I'm already done painting that night view we saw together. Do you want to see? Wow, this is great. It's exactly how we saw it. Not only that, it's so attractive. I'm so happy. The view was so beautiful that I wanted to paint it right away. You wanted to paint that night view. That's why you were looking at it for so long, huh? I'm surprised that you are a professional artist. Oh, stop! I'm not a pro. It's true that there are people who buy my paintings, but the prices vary. It's hard for me to ask this, but how much do you make? Let's see. The average would be around seventy thousand dollars. That's more than how much I'm making. That's quite a job you got there. So it wasn't as if you couldn't afford buying clothes. Um, do I dress weird by any chance? I'm sorry, I'm always home painting, so I don't care much about clothes. That's okay. That's not a thing that I love about you anyway. Ryan, would you leave me with in the cells? Of course, if it's okay with you. After that. Sophie and I get married and started living together, and then I received a message from Judy again, as if she had heard the news from somewhere. Hey, Ryan. So your wife is rich, huh? So what? No wonder why you married a poor-looking woman like that. She doesn't look poor at all. She is great with a beautiful heart. Anyway, I want you to do me a favor. I refuse. I bet it's something like asking for money, right? Ooh, how did you know? I'm impressed, coming from my ex-boyfriend. I don't have any obligations to. Go ask someone else. Oh, don't say such a thing. You are rich. You can give me some. <sighs> you probably bought some brand items, right? You know me very well. I'm impressed, coming from my ex-boyfriend. Anyway, I'm not going to lend you any money. Bye. I received messages from her many times after that, but I ignored all of them. Then her messages had stopped coming completely. I decided to confirm with a friend that we both knew. It seems she had borrowed money from a lot of different people and is going around running away from them. One thing I can say is that I did the right thing, breaking up with Judy. Sophie and I are enjoying a modest but comfortable life together.